relevant with tactics but guest um maybe in the future there is gonna be some substantial changes in uh what i am doing here the uh, you know problem i don't want to say it is a problem but the thing is that i uh, enjoy and, and and really like the whole uh self improving thing and theme i believe that it is also and and still was well still was it it was and still is quite crucial for myself and and for what i'm doing and for the quote unquote success that i might be seeing or have seen up to this point so i think that uh it is really worthwhile um on the other hand of course certain uh, uh interests and uh, priorities in life do change meaning i'm studying architecture so it really would make sense to do something in that realm uh obviously but uh you mean i mean uh always maybe always doing the same thing you know always being in this probably creative space might also not be the best thing you can do you know it might also actually be wrong and and having this realm of maybe just you know a bit more science depends on of course what what we are talking about um is also very smart to have and uh i'm, I'm sharing this thought because i think that it it might be useful for um you know some some that might be having kind of a similar problem i i do indeed always suggest and think that it is smart to to do um you know things simultaneously if that makes sense in terms of okay i am studying architecture so it really does make sense to do something related to that so that i can get even better at um what i'm doing anyways so um and also the whole Instagram thing, posting every day some you know 3D model, something rendered, something that is or has something to do with architecture, really also does make sense because of that. You know, I'm uh, creating this, and or I'm developing this skill or these skills that that could really help me. Besides the fact that you know I'm, it's just interesting to me and it's interesting for me, as well as it's you know the, the whole self improvement thing is interesting to me, which you know might be the problem there. Um, might just you know get a bit more scientific and you know also english is not my mother tongue it's um i've i'm i'm actually you know at this point looking back i'm so incredibly happy that i've started the podcast because i think my english would not be as good as it is right now um you know whether it is about pronunciation or what it is about you know uh using just using it and being able to use it which is very good in, in in various ways and also in uni um didn't by the way think that i would have so many subjects and so many things in english but yeah uh i think and believe that we're gonna do something self-improvement related but a bit more scientific so let's actually see if the neural network newsletter has something new for us the fuck um foundational fitness protocol this is nothing of interest to me why do i enjoy it that much i think uh that really knowing that it is a fact and that it has been studied and um you know getting this presented by someone that really knows um his or her stuff is also very nice to see and very nice to have um so let's see if and Tim Ferriss probably has not posted anything up to this point. Uh, Sam Harris, um, also interesting personality. I don't know if he's having uh, a blog. I mean, blogs are also you know quite good, quite nice. Um, besides books, but uh, yeah, you know, books are books, blogs are blogs period debates essays interviews essays meets the renegades of the intellectual dark web it's a west world what is wrong with cruelty to robots a few thoughts on the muslim ban speaking of truth with jordan peterson 
this might be interesting uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. It's a post by uh, Harris from January 23rd of uh, 2017. Um, it is, it, it, it has some age, you know, so it's not the newest one. There we go. I recently interviewed the psychologist Jordan B. Peterson on the Waking Up podcast. As I said at the beginning of our conversation, I'd received more listener requests for him than for Neil deGrasse Tyson, Richard Dawkins, Stephen Pinker, Edward Snowden, or indeed any other person on earth. The resulting exchange, however, was not what our mutual fans were hoping for, rather than but rather than discuss religion and atheism or the relationship between science and ethics, we spent two hours debating what it means to say that a proposition is or seems to be true. This is not a trivial problem in philosophy, but the place at which Peterson and I got stuck was a strange one. He seems to be claiming that one belief system compatible with our survival must be true, and any that gets us killed must be false. As I try to show, this view makes no sense and it couldn't quite convince myself, and I couldn't quite, I'm sorry, convince myself that Peterson actually held it. The response on social media suggests that most listeners found our exchange as perplexing and frustrating as I did. The main criticism directed at me has been that once we hit this impasse, I wasn't a gracious enough host to let the dialogue proceed to other topics. I understand this complaint and even anticipated it during the dialogue itself, but I feared that if we moved on to discuss the validity of religious faith, the power of myth, the reality of Jungian archetypes, or any of the more ethereal topics for which Peterson has become a celebrated exponent, without first agreeing on how sane and reasonable people can differentiate fact from fantasy, we were doomed to talk past each other with every sentence, which I do really understand, but I... Without you know, ever without myself ever her hearing heard whatever uh, this podcast episode, um, it could really be interesting. And you know, don't get me wrong, if this is something, and I think it is an interesting, um, an interesting topic in general. What I might have seen or might have other people um, uh, heard say is uh, Peterson using. You know, maybe using very intellectual language, very, um, you know, I don't know, uh, very, you know, uh, words that, you know, nobody really is using, at least not in, in common language, like just, you know, in, in everyday, you know, talking, which I, I, I do understand people not liking, because, you know, especially people with um, you know their mother tongue not being English might be really uh, difficult or even more difficult for them, um, exponentially more difficult for them to you know grasp what the conversation is about and it might like uh, you know diminish the amount of people that can actually get something useful out of this podcast episode. Um, but uh, I mean besides that, and you know it's indeed something I I thought about. For, for you know you know quite a few times when it is about something scientific or when it is about you know something science related it really does make sense you know to use those um words that have been created to describe whatever he or she or whomever is talking about so um but even still this is something i really do enjoy about and huberman he is using language that is understandable by almost everyone i'd say and um this is very useful, of course, unless there is no, I mean, when I'm talking about the, the amygdala, I might not be using any other word because it is the amygdala. Um, you know, there might be some other scientific um, ways to, to describe the amygdala or certain other words, maybe in Latin and whatever, but yeah, still. Um, so my point is I do understand people being like, mm, you know, I would have liked to hear something else because, you know, I've been waiting for this podcast for such a long time and I've, you know, not been able to get anything out of it. But yeah, still. The response on social media suggests that most listeners found our exchange as perplexing and frustrating as I did. Peterson and I ended the podcast on a civil note and I promised to have him back if our listeners wanted us to attempt to address other topics he has since tried to clarify his position in a series of emails, one of which he has read publicly. So 
So here is part of the text as email to me in which he speaks about the necessity of finding a basis for ethics, i.e. answering the question, how should we act in the world within a Darwinian framework? So here is an answer. Individually such that the family thrives, and this probably is from this email, um, at the family level so that society thrives, at the societal level so that the ecosystem thrives today, tomorrow, next week, next year, and across time. That is the ultimate what the fuck, P-A-G-E-T-I-A-N, P -I -A -G -E -T -I -A -N, equilibrated state and, or is it Piaget? I don't know. By the way, although if you know this, was trying to solve the problem of the relationship between science and ethics, that's what drove him his entire life. The individual who acts in this manner is the mythological hero who confronts the unknown with attention and intends to communicate, who obtains the gold from the eternal dragon of chaos, an evolved representation of the predatory promising domain beyond the safety of the campfire, and who distributes that gold to the community. He rescues the youthful virgin from the predatory reptile that uh, St. George, it's the oldest story we know of, it is the Enoma Elish, the Mesopotamian creation myth upon which the opening lines of Genesis are historically predicted can't you see the evolutionary relationship? That is the archetypal hero that is first a way of behaving, second a representation of acting, third a way of organizing society around that action and representation, fourth a society that then selects through masculine competition for the best co-tender to that representation, fifth what is selected for by women who peel off the top of the masculine competition, they outsource the impossible cognitive task of mate selection to the male dominance hierarchy. They outsource the outsource the impossible cognitive task of mate selection to the male dominance hierarchy. Which I mean, if I'm reading this, uh, yeah. Anyway, a hero emerges at the top of the competition. He gets all the girls. Human females are mother nature. The selection apparatus. They choose matters that female chimps are not. The archetypal hero is a super meme. Super meme. It's been around so long that we have adapted biologically to its ex existence, just as we have adapted in every way to the 300 million year old dominance hierarchy, which is more permanent, more real, even from a strictly realist perspective, than such evanescent phenomena as amphibians, reptiles, and mammals older even than trees the closer you are to the archetypal hero the more likely you are at least as a male to win the dominance hierarchy contest that makes you attractive to women if dawkins was wiser he would have been carl young an archetype is the ultimate meme or actually carl jung i think he was german um i think if i'm ever gonna finish this one i'm gonna finish it another time um, of course, to, so I, I, I don't understand the whole text there. Um, I, I see certain things that I could just, you know, be looking up and probably then grasp what he's talking about there. But, you know, one, at least myself, some people might be really knowledgeable in these spaces and whatever, but you can still really see certain, uh, um, certain values that, uh, Jordan is, is, or Mr. Peterson is holding. Um, for example, religion being something rather important, religion being something, you know, quite crucial. And, um, you know, also this very, uh, um, well, I don't know how to say it in a, in a very objective sense, um, you know, to, to clearly see, uh, you know, male and female, let's say, boundaries and, and roles and whatever. Um, definitely also something to see there. I do still want to point out, um, I think to some degree it is useful to, to know thoughts of people that are very left-winged and thoughts of people that are very right-winged and things, uh, or thoughts of people that are uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, but, um, 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 yeah, period. I think it can be useful, it can be useful to, you know, to just... You know, maybe even trying to understand the the other um, extremum or the other extreme. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you've been able to to get something out of this text. 
um, out of this thing and I'm hoping to see you the next time. So 